Hello and welcome to another Common Core Geometry lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we'll be doing unit number five, lesson number five, on horizontal and vertical lines. Much of what we do today is going to be review from things that you did in Common Core Algebra 1. You should have looked at equations of horizontal and vertical lines back then. We're going to need them extensively, way, way more in geometry because we're going to be in the coordinate sphere or the coordinate plane quite a bit and we're going to want to be able to describe horizontal and vertical lines and transformations that occur with them using equations. So let's jump into the first exercise where we review how to think about the equations of horizontal and vertical lines. All right, let's take a look at exercise number one. Now in this exercise, we're gonna look at one horizontal line, obviously letter A, and one vertical line, letter B. And we're gonna kinda of walk through each one of these together, all right, and think about why their equations are the way they are, and also talk a bit about the slopes of vertical and horizontal lines. As a reminder, what slope truly is for a line is a measure of how steep it is, right? The larger the slope, the steeper the line is, and also whether or not the line is increasing or whether or not the line is decreasing, okay? And that's whether the slope is positive or negative. So anyway, let's jump right into exercise one. In the graph below, a horizontal line is shown in A and a vertical line is shown in B. Answer each question below the respective graph. All right, so letter A. What is true about all points on this line? Okay, so I'd like you to actually think about it. What's true about all the points on this line? And what's true about all the points on that line? Take a moment, pause the video, and think about it for a second. All right, let's talk about it. Well, one of the ways of kind of getting at what's true about all the points on this line versus that line is to lift, list off some coordinates. Now, I've got two marked points on each line, but of course, there's a lot of other ones. Let's just take a look at the two marked points on this line. On this horizontal line, we've got the marked point negative 2 comma 3, and we've got the marked point 4 comma 3. But let me mark off a couple more points. I'll probably eventually erase them. All right, those three that I just marked off are the point one, three, the point two, three, and the point three, three. And what I can see about every single one of these points is that the y coordinate is three. So let's write that down. The y coordinate equals three. We can do the same thing in letter B. The two marked points are the point two comma four and the point two comma negative one, but I could mark off some other points. Let me just mark off these three, a little bit more variation. We've got the point two comma zero, the point two comma two, the point two comma negative three, right? And what I see that's common in all of these is the same x-coordinate. So the x-coordinate equals 2. All right. This really gets at the heart of what the equations then should be for this horizontal line and for this vertical line. Remember that an equation should simply represent what is true about all the points that are plotted. And so, in the second question, when it says, what is an equation that would describe all points on this line? Well, it's what is true about all points on this line. What's true about every single point on that line is that y is equal to three. Notice that the x-coordinate doesn't even show up in this equation, because the x-coordinate can change for the points on this line, whereas the y-coordinate, no matter how far we extend it in either direction, is always three. This can be very, very tricky for people, right? Because it almost looks like when I say y equals three, I'm talking about a single point, right? There's no x there, right? There's no y equals mx plus b. Same thing is true for the second equation where it says, what's the equation of the vertical line? Well, what's true about every single point on this vertical line is x equals two. And so that becomes its equation. 
And again, even more so, when I have something like x equals 2, that for a lot of students appears to be just a single point. You know, they think, all right, I got a number line like this, and I've got this single point x equals 2. But when we're in two-dimensional space, okay, where they're both x and y coordinates, when I say graph the equation x equals 2, what I'm basically saying is plot every point where x is 2. And likewise, when I say plot the line y equals 3, what I'm saying is plot every point where the y coordinate is 3. The x coordinate could be anything it wants to be. Same thing here, the y coordinate could be anything it wants to be. So, we'll summarize all of this eventually. Let's now talk a little bit about the slopes of horizontal and vertical lines. And again, slope should be a measure of how steep the line is. The larger the slope, the steeper the line. The smaller the slope, the closer to zero, the more shallow or, or horizontal the line should be. But let's see what we get just from the slope equation, all right? Using the two marked points, calculate the slope of this line. Be sure to simplify your final answers. So again, we've got these two points, negative 2, comma 3, and positive 4, comma 3. All right, let me pan up a little bit. And we know that the slope formula, right, which is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, let me just put the actual calculation down here. Let's see, y2 would be 3, y1 would be 3, x2 would be 4, x1 would be negative 2, 3 minus 3 is 0, and 4 minus negative 2 is 6. And I hope everyone's comfortable with the fact that 0 divided by 6 is just 0. Right? That should be simple. It also should be not surprising, right? We're talking about a horizontal line right? A horizontal line. A line that is literally flat, right? So saying that it's got a slope of zero makes a lot of sense. It's not steep at all. Its steepness is zero. And that is true of all horizontal lines. All horizontal lines will have a slope of zero. But vertical lines and their slope is much, much trickier. All right, so let's take a look at the slope calculation here. Again, what do we have? We have the point 2 comma negative 1, and we have the point 2 comma 4. So now, if we come down here and we calculate the slope, I'll get y2 minus y1 all divided by x2 minus x1. And that means I'll have a slope of 5 divided by 0. Now, it would be very, very understandable if you said 5 divided by 0. It's 0. But is it? Is 5 divided by 0, 0? What would this wonderfully beautiful calculator here tell me? Let me just bring it up here for a second. Let me ask it what 5 divided by 0 is. Oh, that's wrong. Sorry about that. It never quite got it. Let's try that again. 5 divided by 0 equals, and it says infinity. I'm not sure I quite agree with that, but it's a lot closer than saying zero. And what is infinity? Infinity is a number larger than any other number, right? And it's not really even a number. It's more of a concept than anything else. But if we think about how steep a vertical line is, saying that the slope is infinite might make some sense. Most of the time, though, we would say that 5 divided by 0, whoops, 5 divided by 0, let me try to get my pen back here is undefined. Undefined. In other words, the slope of a vertical line is so large that we can't even assign a number to it. The slope of a horizontal line, well, that's zero. The slope of a vertical line, that's undefined. And this gets into kind of a deeper issue in math that I want to explore just for a couple minutes, which is why can't you divide by zero? All right, so we're going to summarize everything about horizontal and vertical lines in just a moment. But before we do so, I want to talk a little bit more about this, because I think it gets short-changed in math, even though it is an exceptionally important idea that is going to keep coming up in your face as long as you stick with math. So let's talk about why you can't divide by zero. 
all right? By first thinking about what you can divide by. So let, let, let's talk about this question. Why is division by zero undefined? Well, let's go all the way back to third grade, right? That's when you first start learning about division, right? And back then you learned that 18 divided by two is equal to nine. But why is 18 divided by two equal to nine? Think about that for a minute. Now some people will fall back on some kind of idea like there's nine twos that fit into 18. And that's fine, but oftentimes when we first think about division, we think about it in terms of multiplication. In other words, 18 divided by two is nine. Why? Well, that's simple. Because 18 equals two times nine, right? That's why 18 divided by two is nine, because 18 is two times nine. Why is 28 divided by seven equal to four? Well, that's simple, and that's because 28 is equal to 7 times 4. We can even understand sort of more strange division this way. So for instance, something that a lot of students kind of struggle with, which is dividing by a fraction, why is 20 divided by 1 half 40? Well, that's because 20 equals 1 half times 40, right? That's simple enough. And even going back to that example where we had the horizontal line, not the vertical line, why is 0 divided by 5 equal to 0? Well, that's because 0 equals 5 times 0, right? Now, pause for a minute. Make sure you understand all of this before we talk about why 5 divided by 0 is undefined. Feel comfortable with it? All right, now think about this. Why is five divided by zero undefined? Well, let's just pretend for a moment it wasn't undefined. Let's pretend for a moment that instead of five divided by zero being undefined, that five divided by zero was some number, whatever it is, right? Well, if there was a number, if five divided by zero was some number, then the answer to the question why would be because five equals zero times that number. And yet, zero times any number is zero. That's actually known as the zero product law. And again, if you think about it, zero times seven is zero, zero times three is zero, zero times one half is zero. So what number exactly can we multiply by zero and get five? The answer is there isn't any number, right? There just simply isn't any number. And again, for those students who guess, understandably, guess that 5 divided by 0 is 0, well then that would mean that 5 was equal to 0 times 0. But I am definitely sure that 0 times 0 is 0. All right, so that, that's definitely not right. I mean, that's a, that's a big, bad, red no-no, right? The plain fact is anytime you divide by 0, it must be undefined because if it wasn't, then zero times some number could be a number that's not zero. That doesn't make any sense. Anyway, let's go on. Let's summarize what we saw in that first exercise, all right, about horizontal and vertical lines. So exercise number two, we want to kind of fill in the blanks here, okay? Exercise two, it's important to have basic facts about horizontal and vertical lines very clear because of how often they are used. Fill in the statements about both below. All right, so our parallel two have equations of the form and have slopes equal. Let's do horizontal lines together and then see if you can fill in the vertical lines. First off, horizontal lines are all parallel to the x-axis. All right, they're all parallel to the x-axis. They all have equations of the form y equals some number. Very simple equations, horizontal lines, right? Y equals seven is a horizontal line. Y equals negative two is a horizontal line. Y equals 13 is a horizontal line. And finally, they have slopes equal to zero, right? And again, that makes sense. Horizontal lines are flat, right? They have no steepness to them at all, so zero makes sense for their slopes. Take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can fill the same things in for vertical lines. All right, let's do it. 
Vertical lines are parallel, no great surprise, to the y-axis. They have equations of the form x equals a number. So x equals negative 2 is a vertical line. x equals 5 is a vertical line. And finally, the trickiest part about vertical lines is that they have slopes that are undefined. It wouldn't be crazy to have to say that they have slopes that are infinite, all right? But generally speaking, we say that the slopes of vertical lines are undefined, not infinite, okay? All of these are extremely important facts because you want to be able to use horizontal and vertical lines and their equations very quickly in problems. And we're going to obviously get some work on that for the rest of the lesson. Take a moment though and write down anything here you need to. All right, let's move on. Exercise number two. So now we've got to apply what we know. Okay, and this one's kind of a nice exercise. Let's take a look. Exercise number three. Shade in the figure, shade in the figure that is enclosed by the lines whose equations are shown below. Label each line on the graph with its equation. So we have three different types of lines here. A line that has both x and y in it, a line that has only y in it, and a line that only has x in it. What I'd like you to do is take a few minutes, since you now should know how to plot all three of these lines, and go ahead and do so. Then shade the region that's enclosed, and we'll talk about it. Alright, let's go through it. So the first line, because it has both an x and a y in it, is a slanted line, right? And it's a slanted line whose y-intercept is 4, and whose slope is negative 5 thirds. So this goes back to a previous lesson that we did, actually it was the last one, on plotting and the equations of slanted lines. So let's take a look. We've got a y-intercept of 4 and a slope of negative 5 thirds, meaning that we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, right? We're going to have that run of 3 and then a drop of 5, a run of 3, and a drop of 5. That's probably going to be enough for me to draw a pretty accurate line. right? We want to definitely have more than just probably those two points, but three points should certainly be enough. That looks pretty good. And I'll get my line drawn. All right. Might as well right away label it with its equation. y equals negative 5 thirds x plus 4. All right, that looks good. Now, probably trickier though are the other two lines, right? The point here is that when you look and you see the equation of y equals 9, you need to know immediately from what we've already done that that's a horizontal line. Now, if you need to, what I suggest to students is generate some points. Generate some points that make this true. Now, what, what, what would make that equation true? Any point where the y coordinate is 9. So for instance, certainly the point 0, 9 would work, and the point 1, 9 would work, and the point 2, 9 would work. You just got to make sure that the y coordinate is always 9. So where's 0, 9? It's right here, 1, 9 right here, 2, 9 right here. And hopefully after about three points, if you don't already know it's a horizontal line, you will. Okay, in which case I can just bring my ruler up. This is simple enough now, not too hard. And I get y equals 9. Likewise, when we see x equals 6, we have to know that's a vertical line. Again, if you don't know it's a vertical line right off the top of your head, you could always generate some points like 6, 0, 6, 1, 6, 2, etc. Right? So 6, 0 would be right here. 6, 1 would be right here. 6, 2 would be right here. And again, hopefully those three points are enough to remind you that an x equals equation is a vertical line, in which case I need to turn my ruler vertically, bring it on over. Wow, that just didn't work at all. Let me, uh, let me erase that. That was weird. Normally it works just fine. Who knows? 
there we go. Technology. And of course I went right through the equation of my other line, which goes to show you should never write the equations down until you have all your lines graphed. There it is. By the way, there is one last thing I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to shade in the region, right? And the region here is this triangular region, like that. In geometry, they could easily also ask you for the area of that region. We haven't really done a lot of area work yet, but we'll come back to it. Actually, we'll see it in a few lessons. All right, so that's it. Nice, simple kind of graphing procedure, making sure you know how to graph slanted lines, horizontal lines, and vertical lines. Pause the video now if you need to for a moment to write down any of this, and then we'll move on to another exercise. All right, let's do it. One of the things that we did back in unit number two, which was all about transformations, is we looked at reflecting points across the x-axis and across the y-axis. What we're going to do now is we're going to look at reflecting lines, or oh, sorry, reflecting points about any horizontal or vertical line. Clearly, the y-axis is a vertical line. It's actually the line x equals zero. And the x-axis is a horizontal line. It's the line y equals zero. But we can reflect easily, or we should be able to reflect easily, across any horizontal or vertical line. So let's take a look at what this exercise asks us to do. Exercise number four. Given triangle ABC shown, find its image, A prime, B prime, C prime, after a reflection in the line Y equals negative two. State the coordinates of the images of the three vertices after the reflection. So it's not hard to do this problem as long as you know how to plot y equals negative 2. Right? And if you know how to plot that because it's a horizontal line, great. Again, if you have to, you could always generate some points where the y coordinate is negative 2 and then plot them. All right, but if you don't need to do this, great. If you can just walk right up to the board and say, all right, I'm going to draw in y equals negative 2, then perhaps you don't need any of those points. Great. Now, doing the reflection in this line is as easy as thinking about the vertical distance each one of these points, a, b, and c, are away from y equals negative 2. So for example, point A right now, you can count, is one, two, three units below, vertically, below that line. So when I reflect it above the line, it will end up being three units above the line. Remember, this thing should end up being the perpendicular bisector of the segment that connects A with its image. So in fact, it'll be right here. A prime. And maybe I want to do that right now. So I have A, which is sitting at negative 7. Sorry, that's negative 8, not negative 7. A, which is sitting at negative 8, comma, negative 5, maps to A prime, which is now at negative 8, positive 1. Right? And again, it's all about, let me do some red so that you can maybe see it a little bit better. It's all about the fact that this thing was three units below and then ends up reflecting to be three units above. Why don't you go ahead and reflect points B and point C, don't forget to do this piece here, and plot the resulting triangle. And then we'll take a look at it. All right, do you have them? As always, when I ask you to like work on a problem, pause that video, take as much time as you have or that you can, and then unpause it and we move on. Let's take a look. So right now, right, B is currently sitting six units above y equals negative two. So one, two, three, four, five, whoops. One, two, three, four, five, six. Come on, there we go. B prime down there. So we've got B, which originally had coordinates of negative four, four. Now going to B prime, which has coordinates of negative four, negative eight. 
Likewise, point C is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units below y equals negative 2, so now it'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units above. All right, so C, which used to be at positive 6, negative 7, now goes to C prime, which is at positive 6, positive 3. Okay, um, let me connect so that I get the image of my triangle really quickly. Connecting those two. These two. And these two. Getting rid of that ruler somehow. Oh boy. There we go. That's a little bit better. And we have our reflected image. And you can really kind of see that reflected image, right? You should be able to almost see that it's an identical, a congruent triangle, right? But that's been flipped across y equals negative 2. This is really no different than when we reflected lines across the y-axis or the x-axis. The key is, when you see y equals negative 2, you have to know what kind of a line it is and how to plot it. All right, let me step back, write down anything you need to, and then we'll move on to the last problem. Okay, let's do it. Last problem, multiple choice, right? Very similar to the last one in that we've got a triangle, M, N, P, and we've got its image, M prime, P prime, N prime. In the graph shown below, triangle M prime, N prime, P prime is the image of M, N, P after a reflection in which of the following lines? Which line was this reflected in, was this triangle reflected in to get this one? Pause the video now and think about this a bit. All right, well, let's take a look at it. One thing that's really quite cool about this is you can really kind of tell that it's a vertical line very easily, okay? You can even come up with this equation by thinking about what a reflection is. Here's what I mean. I'm gonna go, go to red, all right? If I bring my ruler up and I connect M and M prime, or at least try to connect them, and I connect P and P prime, and also n and n prime. Okay, then whatever line that I reflected the one triangle across to get the other triangle must perpendicularly bisect all three of those red line segments. Well, those three red line segments are all horizontal, so the line of reflection must be vertical, and it must pass through the midpoint of each one of those line segments. Well, take the smallest one, right? This thing is now 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units, so its midpoint must be right there. Likewise, the midpoint of this thing has to be there, and the midpoint of n, n prime must be there. So, I can actually draw the line of reflection like that. And now, of course, the key is to be able to look at that and go, oh, it's a vertical line, so it has an x equals equation. Now there's really only one choice here, the line x equals 4, but that should make sense because every single point along that red line, the x-coordinate is 4. All right, that's it. Pretty basic. And we'll get a lot more work with horizontal and vertical lines in future lessons because they'll just come up and we'll have to use them. They are simply tools in our larger mathematical tool chest for now. All right, take a little moment if you need to, and then we'll wrap up the lesson. Okay, let's do it. In this lesson, we reviewed some basics about horizontal and vertical lines, such as the fact that horizontal lines have y equals equations, vertical lines x equals equations. We reviewed how to plot them by generating some points that could lie in the lines that make those equations true. Right? That's pretty simple. And we also talked about the fact that horizontal lines have slopes of zero and vertical lines have slopes that are undefined. We even took a little look at why division by zero is undefined. 
All right, and that's again kind of an important topic, not so much for this course, but for future ones. All right, for now, I'd like to thank you for joining me for another Common Core Geometry lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems.